Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful day. I don't know about you guys, but it feels a bit like a Karen sort of day today. I don't know what that means, but I can sort of feel it. So yeah, on this beautiful day today, we're going to read some stories about Karens. And I hope you're excited, guys. I'll be reading a whole bunch of new Karen stories at the beginning of this. And then after that episode, I'm going to play a compilation of all our other Karen stories. So yeah, guys, sit back and relax, and I hope you have a wonderful time. Karen screws herself out of a hundred dollars. I just got to witness a Karen die inside in real time and it was glorious. I work in a big chain supermarket and I had to jump into Delhi and help serve because they were getting smashed. I've only served Delhi a few times and I was still relatively new to entering items into the scales that printed tickets. A lady asked me for a kilo of wings and 40 of our chicken skewers. I ring the skewers up, $2.80, print the ticket and I go to wrap. Um, excuse me? Full Karen mode. The ticket says two fifty each. That says 280. This means I get it for free, right? I go look at the ticket. It's 280. So I say, sorry, no, it's definitely 280. But I notice I screwed up. Items that are charged by each need a quantity too. Otherwise, the system thinks you just have one. I smile a sickly sweet smile. No, it's definitely 280. But good thing you pointed that out. I accidentally only charged you for one instead of 40. So let me ring that up again. The look on her face was priceless as the new total appeared on the screen. In trying to save 30 sense she screwed herself out of saving over a hundred dollars f you karen wow that's so funny so if they didn't say anything they would have paid for only one that's a hundred percent instant karma like oh no you were super rude and annoying and you got what you deserved oh no what a shame story number two karen accuses me of trespassing and littering at my job i work for an hoa management company i'm pretty sure that means homeowner association what i usually do is go to different communities and i do some maintenance work such as picking up trash and fixing park equipment. I always start my shift at 7am. I went to this park that has a rule that no one is allowed there before 8am. It was a very small park, so I was able to finish my job in 15 minutes. I was putting the trash bags out on the curb for the garbage men to pick up. They drive by around 7.30, so I have to be quick when I show up at 7. A lady walking her dog noticed me putting the trash out on the curb and assumed that I was up to no good. She took a picture of me as I was working and a picture of the park hours. She then approaches me asking me what I'm doing here. Karen, what are you doing here? Nobody is allowed here before 8am. You need to leave before I call the cops on you for trespassing and littering. Me, I work here and I'm doing the opposite of littering. I'm picking up trash here at the park. Karen, how do you explain the garbage you're leaving here? It is littering. Me, this is trash that I picked up from the park and I'm leaving it here for the garbage men to pick up. Karen, no, it's littering and you can't be here. Pointing at the sign. Me, like I said, I work here. I have a right to do my job here. Karen, so what, you think you're above the law? Oh my god, how annoying can you be? Me, I never said that. I'm just here because I have a job to do. I don't even have to listen to you, I'm leaving. I get in my truck and I started to find Karen standing behind me on the phone, keeping me from backing up. Karen on the phone. I'm reporting someone at the park trespassing and leaving trash. He claims to be above the law. I just sat there and waited for the cops to show up because I knew they'd be on my side the second they showed up. I turned up my music to ignore Karen yelling. Shortly, a police officer showed up. He approached the Karen first and then approached my window. Officer, is what this lady's saying true? Me? No, officer. I work here and I'm cleaning and I'm leaving trash for the garbage men to pick up. Meanwhile, garbage men are picking up the trash behind him. Officer, very well. I'll get this lady out of your way so you can continue with your day. And thank you for keeping our community clean. Me? No problem and thank you, officer. The officer drags her out of the way. I back up and I drive away while the Karen stares at me with a shocked Pikachu face. I'm laughing and rolling down the window to make sure she can hear me. Yeah, and good on you too, OP. They deserve to be laughed at after doing something like this. Like, hey, random person, I'm gonna make an issue out of nothing and basically be a giant pain for no reason. Like, what's with people like this? Are they so bored but also rude at the same time that they decide to do stuff like this? Like, oh, I've got nothing to do and I wanna be awful. Let's make somebody's day worse. I feel like that's how they think. The next one is called I Heard This in the Parking Lot. Let me press preface this by saying, yes, this is cliche. And no, I was not a part of this exchange. I only really remember two lines, but holy hell was it cathartic to hear. You don't look disabled, man. Yeah, and you don't look like a C word, but you clearly are. <laughs> All I remember of the interaction after was a lot of ranting. And frankly, I wasn't going to get involved. I love how you've only shared two lines, but those two lines portray so much. Like, I feel like I can imagine this situation. And yeah, you definitely did the right thing by not getting involved. It's not like you
you can win an argument with a Karen. People like this are impossible. Story number four. Karen thinks it's okay to go trick-or-treating after midnight. So last year's Halloween candy has been a bit of a waste here in UK. I'm trying to lose weight and get healthier so I can get on a kidney transplant list. In brackets, gain the COVID belly. My sister still insists that we buy it though, just in case. Well, last night we had no one once again. I go to bed as I have to be up early to get to dialysis. 12.30am doorbell goes off. Door getting thumped. My sister and I both wake up. I tell her I'll deal with it, thinking it's a neighbour emergency. Karen's there with her embarrassed looking husband and dog and tired looking kids at a guess maybe six years old. At last, trick or treat. I grunt irritated. Lady, it's gone midnight. We're asleep. Well, you're up now, so give my little angel some sweets. Now thoroughly pissed off. I just look at her. It's cold, dark and wet and your kids look exhausted. We may have something left, but I can't guarantee it. Mainly because my sister sat there eating it all night herself. I couldn't let my kids go without me. So now I'm off work. We go trick or treating. Sighing, but feeling bad for the kids. I found what was left and I gave it to the kids. Who, to be fair, were in costume and polite, but clearly wanted to go home. Her husband told her to move off and then apologized for it. But I moved past him and said to Karen as she's about to thump on my neighbor's door of our semi-detached house, don't even think about knocking on that door. She's 88. Let her sleep. Karen flipped me off, but stormed away from that house and down the other driveway. Is this one okay to wake up? Sarcastic and be archy. Even her husband was getting pissed off and just grabbed her arm. We're going home now. He looked at me again and apologized again. Thanks, Karen. I struggled to get back to sleep. Slept through my alarm and was late to dialysis, which makes my day longer. Messes with the clinic timing and has left me pissed off. Oh, that one was so bad. Like it's meant to be a fun thing to do and they're just being awful. Yeah, and on that super aggravating night, it's definitely compilation time, guys. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed the compilation. Something about Karens. They're so frustrating. And yeah, I'm going to go film an Am I the A-Hole episode and I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Karen is still butt hurt because we built a playground in the neighborhood. For years, our neighborhood has had a patch of green space open for recreation. Until this year, it was just bare grass and some trees and a few benches with a couple of neighbors' fences backing onto it. Yesterday, after years of people talking about the idea but getting nowhere, we opened a small playground that occupies a tenth of the space. I and other parents of young children actively lobbied for this playground at meetings with the local park board, where we heard some pretty hysterical arguments against the idea, ranging from environmental damage to increased crime to exploding toilets. Yeah, exploding toilets. Ask me about that one if you want. So let's talk about Karen. She's one of the neighbors who lives near the playground and wasn't happy with the idea. At one point we were considering the empty lot right next to her house as the playground side, but that idea didn't last long. She's still finding reasons to complain. Not even half an hour ago she posted to our neighborhood Facebook group asking parents to call off the kids who are on the playground making noise. Question, what day out of all the days of the year is the day when sugared up children are most likely to be out past their bedtime, and given that this day often generates more enthusiasm in our town than Christmas, shouldn't Karen know this? Wait a second though, how close is the playground to their house? Like, I don't know if I'd like a playground being right next to my house either. Yeah, like this comment says, and yet I've seen so many stories on Reddit of people being tortured by the constant screams of playing children. There's merit on both sides of this. Like, yeah, if it is a little bit far away from their house, then okay. But I don't know, if their house literally is gonna back onto it, then I kind of agree. That could definitely be super annoying. Wow, starting the episode agreeing with the Karen in the story? Is that a good start to the episode? Or have I failed in finding a Karen story? There are heaps of comments here agreeing with the Karen as well. But yeah, for real, if it was super close to their house, that would be pretty obnoxious. So it's pretty understandable that they don't want it there, I feel like. The next one is called My First Karen in the Wild. A week ago, I purchased an ink cartridge at an office supply store and later discovered I got one that didn't fit my specific printer. I brought it back with the receipt originally packaging everything I needed. I went over to the returns area and I stood in line behind a lady, probably in her 80s with white hair in the style of a Karen haircut. As she moved to the front, she pulled out an ink cartridge with no receipt or packaging. She demanded that they give her money back as she purchased it the day before. The employee refused, saying that she didn't have a package nor did she have the receipt. She then demanded the sales manager. The sales manager came over and the following conversation took place. Karen, I bought this item a few weeks ago and I want a refund. I don't have a package or a receipt 
proceed. I don't know why it didn't work. The printer said something was wrong with the ink cartridge. Employee, ma'am, you just told me that you bought it a day ago. Karen, well, you can check my credit card. I bought it a day ago. The employee and the manager checked her credit card to find out when that product was last purchased. They flipped the monitor around and pointed to a date, 29th of December 2019. She then flipped out and demanded the store manager, who gave her the polite version of F off, we can't do anything. She then left. Wow, I bought it yesterday. <laughs> Wait, so they actually did buy it in 2019? Wait, so why are they trying to return it? That's amazing. How did they think that was going to work? Like, oh yeah, it'll be totally fine. They'll definitely give me a refund. Yeah, this one kind of raises more questions than it answers. Why are you returning it now? Why do you feel like you can return it? And what's even going on here? The next one is called Karen Wants My Tires. It's almost snow season here and I booked an appointment to have my tire swapped today a month ago. The first snow is forecast Wednesday morning. So I knew it would be busy but when I got there it was actually chaos. I checked my vehicle in after about 15 minutes in line and was thinking they were moving pretty quickly for it to be that short given that they had so many vehicles. There were even some parked on the grass. I had to park a quarter of a mile down and then walk up and for the next hour I waited and I got to hear the poor employees get screamed at over and over by walking customers without any appointments who thought they should get their tires immediately. But then the last one really takes the cake. She'd been staring through the big windows at the shop the whole time that she was in line. She was told that she had two choices, make an appointment for next Monday and come back or leave her vehicle and they get it done in the order it came in after those with appointments. So she'd probably need to come back in eight hours. She started freaking out, screaming and cussing that she needed her tires now and didn't care who was in front of her because she was the first in line right now. The employee patiently and kindly explained to her her options again and that they were booked for a solid week. She never even looked at him. She cut him off yelling at him to give her the tires in the back of the little black SUV that they just rolled out. I checked over my shoulder and sure enough, they just finished up my Land Rover. The employee kept trying to tell her that the tires are mine and that they have plenty of tires. They only have four work bays. Well, that SUV is off the lift, so just put mine on it and give me the tires you put in the back of it. It's really simple. Are you an idiot? He blinked and started to say something and I cut in. Hey, that's my car. Those are my tires. I own them. Are you suggesting that he steal my all-terrain tires that suck in snow and have them put them on your car that they won't even fit? Her. Tires are tires. Me. Then drive off with the ones that you have on and leave everybody here the hell alone. Her now whining like a toddler. But they're not snow tires. I need snow tires. I lost it laughing. Neither are my off-road tires that they're taking off my rims to put my snow tires on. Me. Seriously, just make an appointment like the rest of us did and you'll have tires that fit. No, stop yelling at people and go book it online. I stood up. I don't think I'm exactly intimidating as a 5 foot 6, 49 year old woman, but it worked. She left and several others in line followed her out. Honestly, I felt bad about that. Me to the employee. Sorry you lost business there, but my vehicle's done. He was laughing but trying to hide it. Apparently everybody that left had been yelling at them earlier too, so he didn't mind. I still don't understand what her thought process was in the whole thing. Someone said as I was leaving that she'd also left her car parked in the middle of the right hand traffic lane on the busy highway in front of the place. But yeah, shout out to that employee for never losing his call at all. I can only imagine what his day was like already by the time she started in, based on just the time that I was there. Friendly reminder, if you live somewhere where it snows, book your tire appointment in advance. Yeah, what did they even want to happen? That's so frustrating. The top comment says, the best comeback I ever had for someone like this was, were you born this stupid or did you have to work for it? I wish I was always that clever. Yeah, I think it's even more frustrating because it doesn't make any sense. What are they even meant to do? They're doing tires on other cars. They're just too busy. But no, they should drop everything so that they can have tires. The next one is called Karen runs out of gas, blames the cashier, me, and expects me to pay for it. I have posted this story in another subreddit years ago, but I think it'd fit well here. So enjoy. Okay, this one's going back to 2003. I'm working a minimum wage at a very busy gas station in the UK. I'd only been there for a few months, which is outstanding considering the staff turnover for this place. I know the ropes of this place and it also and still is very busy. Lines of cars and trucks going down the highway and a line of customers going out the door and I'm working alone as usual. Hundreds of customers with places to be. The cast of the story. Me, the overworked 17 year old with a bright future of PTSD and other mental health goodness. Next 15 years of bliss in this hellhole. Karen, old B arch missing her butler but still has a 10 yard pole up a you know what. Customers, everybody else. Karen got out of a taxi and came up to the front of the line past 20 customers that were waiting patiently. Age 70 plus, she's dressed head to toe in black velvet, a fur coat and wearing more platinum jewellery than I've ever 
first scene. She also looked vaguely familiar. She demands in a very snobby voice, I need fuel. Imagine Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter, but fatter. Me. I'm sorry, but you have to wait your turn as I served customers. Karen. I need fuel and my car collected from down the road. Me and a few customers give her a weird look. If you've broken down, I have the number for a recovery service and you can use our phone and hand her a card with the number and the phone in between the customers. She just looked at the card as if I put dead rats on the counter. You can't do it. Why can't you do it? Me. I'm afraid to say I can't. It's very busy today while I'm still serving customers. Karen. No, why can't you go retrieve my car? Me wondering what the hell. We're a petrol station. We don't do other recovery services. Karen. Nonsense. You'll collect my car this instant. I'm getting annoyed by now. So are the other customers. She lets her car run out of fuel, leaves it on a now gridlocked highway, gets a taxi to my station and somehow it's my fault and responsibility to rectify the situation. How? I can't close the station. I'm here on my own. I don't own a car or even have a license. I will call the recovery company for you when I have a free moment. Just be aware that there will be a charge fee and you need payment in cash. There's an ATM outside. She now gets red in the face. Are you stupid? Why should I pay? My car has run out of fuel. You have to deal with it. I'm trying to keep cool and serve customers and finding an alternative to get her out of the store at this point. In that case, there are fuel cans behind you. You can purchase and fill them. Karen, very well. She picks up a one gallon can and slams it on the counter. Go fill it. I say sorry to the next customer and I scan the can. That'll be five pounds and another 350 to fill it. So 850 altogether. Karen, I'm not paying for that. It's your responsibility to provide fuel. Are they joking? And your customer service is atrocious. I refuse to pay. You'll pay for my recovery, my fuel and my taxi. Me? Well then you can leave. And the entire line of customers start chewing her out too. Telling her to get the hell out of here. We're busy and they're a stupid old cow. Karen, you'll be hearing from me about this and I'll have your job for this insolence. And then she storms out and gets back into the taxi that was blocking my forecourt. We did hear back from her about a week later. She'd gone to customer complaints, read the regional manager and the national HR, claiming that I was responsible for her car running out of fuel, it being abandoned on a highway, refusing to pay for towing and refueling and being humiliated in front of customers with demands of reimbursement and compensation for poor quality of service. Finally, a letter of apology written and signed by me with my letter of resignation. A few weeks after this, the manager pulls me aside. She knew all about it. She heard the story from me and a few of our regular customers, as well as watched and heard it on all of our security cameras. The Karen sounded crazy and looked like she had just come out of a funeral. She chalked it up as being emotionally drained, senility, mental health, and said to not worry about it. Then she got the letters and phone calls from head office and that threw her theory out the window. She handed me a copy of the response letter that was sent to Karen, stating that she was barred from all of our company stations nationwide, informed that the company is not a charity and entering one of our stations or approaching our staff will result in removal by police. I read the name and I realized she was my old principal from primary school. She was an old hellhound when I was five and looks like she just got worse as she got older. See you in hell, Mrs. M. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about this one. I thought the person in the last one didn't make any sense. This one's on a whole new level, but good on you though. It sounds like you handled this super well. I can't even begin to imagine how frustrating this would have been. The next one is called Sued by Karen. I'm a tattoo artist in a private salon and a hairstylist, Karen, from down the hole asked me to cover up her C-section, lap band and skin removal surgery scars. I told her I could and that it would take more than one session because what she wanted was so large. I gave her a smoking deal and she agreed. Before we started, she signed my consent and we reviewed aftercare instructions. She was the worst client imaginable. She was late to every appointment, up to 50 minutes. She left during sessions to get snacks from the gas station and on two occasions, she asked me to leave my studio so she could talk on the phone privately. On top of that, she was so sensitive that I could only get about one to one and a half hours of tattooing in at a time. She was so uncooperative and wasted so much time that I ended up seeing her a total of six sessions. There was one small area that wasn't finished because she was so sensitive there that she always asked me to move to something else. However, she was so happy with the work that was done that she posted videos of it to TikTok when on vacation in June. Near the end of June, I went on a mission trip with my high school youth group students and the day after I arrived home, July 3rd, she asked me how soon I could reschedule her. I told her I wasn't available again until after school started, August 1st, but that I would reach back out when the time got closer. A week later, she texted me to say how dare I have other clients in my studio when I told her I wasn't available to see her until August and that she wanted half of her money back to get another artist to finish it. I gave her the reason why I was unavailable. Plus, those clients had been scheduled prior to going on the mission trip. I told her I wasn't giving her any refund and I said I was tired of her taking advantage of me. She replied with a lot of senseless garbage. 
Bridge. The last of which was, everyone who messes with me gets the short end of the stick. And don't worry, you'll see me again and God sees you. I roll, I roll. Nine days later, before August the 1st even came around, she filed a civil claim against me seeking nine times what she paid for the tattoo. I filed my response along with the evidence to support it. I appeared in court on Monday and the judge immediately sent us to mediation before hearing the case. The mediator informed me that she'd now filed an amendment and was now asking for $2,000 more than the original claim, allegedly for even more pain and suffering. He asked her to present her case so that he could help us try to work out a settlement. She rambled on and on, lied throughout and complained about how humiliating it was for her to have to show pictures of her half-naked body to the court. He asked me what my response was and I stated, she filed this claim against me because I didn't schedule another appointment for her as quickly as she wanted me to. I never refused to see her again and I refused to give her a refund because she signed a contract that says she understands that she's not entitled to any refunds and I showed him the signed contract. He excused me from the room and they talked for about 20 minutes before he grabbed me to talk in another room. He said, she's willing to accept half of what she was asking for and if you agree we won't have to go back to the courtroom. I asked him what the challenges to my defense were and he mumbled some nonsense that made it even more evident that he just wanted me to cave so he could move on. He didn't allow me any time at all to tell him the details of my side of things. I felt ready to present my defense to the judge. I told the mediator I wasn't settling for anything and he instructed me to go back to the courtroom. I returned to the courtroom and the judge asked me if we'd worked everything out and I said no sir. He chuckled and said that he'd help. I waited for about 10 minutes and the judge sent someone to go retrieve the mediator and the claimant so that he could start the hearing. A couple of minutes later the mediator came in alone and shoved a piece of paper in my face and said that she's dismissed the claim. He told me that I was free to go. I surmised that she didn't expect me to call her bluff or she did expect me to cave into settling. I think she backed out because she didn't want to have the photos of her body displayed on the courtroom TVs. The whole thing was so aggravating but I was slightly disappointed that I didn't get to present in the court because I wanted a humiliator. I've never met someone so entitled and self-important. I think she knew about the mediation ahead of time and thought she had a golden opportunity to get something for nothing. Bye Karen. Edit. Let this serve as a warning to other professionals out there. Certain people believe that they own you once they've paid you for something. This Karen was beyond unreasonable and there were red flags at the beginning that I should have paid attention to. Additionally, make sure you have a solid contract. Before I ever started tattooing, I searched through lots of tattoo artists' other consents until I found one that looked like they had probably been sued at some point and I modelled mine after theirs. It's so frightening to feel like you could be indebted to someone for many thousands of dollars for one slight misstep or one mouthy text. I never said I refused to see her again, which would have been one of the two main points to my defence, although that's what I was thinking and what I wanted to say in the moment. I'm glad I restrained myself from arguing with her. That's totally unlike me, lol. This was a valuable lesson to learn about being selective with clients and work and passing on the red flags. You do not owe anyone a service or appointment just because they ask you for it. Update. Some have asked if I have to see her in our building still. I didn't cross paths with her or see her in our building again until after July. Luckily, there were no uncomfortable encounters. Our schedules didn't seem to overlap much. Plus, I was trying to avoid her. And I think she was trying to avoid me too. And I moved out of that suite at the end of October for unrelated reasons. Wow, good on you for standing your ground. When I was reading this and they were asking for a settlement, I was thinking please don't give them any money. But yeah, it sounds like you handled this so well and so they need to go find somebody else to finish their tattoo. Well, at least you don't have to work with them anymore. Like, oh, what's that? I don't have to deal with you anymore. Oh, what a shame. The next one is called I don't care if your daughter is going on national TV. I can't make an order right now. This happened Saturday night during rush hour. I'm the front of house manager of a Chinese restaurant that has a really big busy to go. One of my hostesses handed me the phone and said, this lady said that she's not going to wait at all for her order and wants to speak to a manager. Even though we were quoting 40 minutes, the conversation went like this. Me, hi, this is the manager. Unfortunately, I can't get your order out before our wait time as our kitchen is extremely busy. Karen, put my order first. I need it now. Me, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Karen, you don't understand. My daughter is going on national TV at 7pm. It was 6.45 at this point and is going to be a celebrity and I need it now. I'll pay you extra. Me. I don't think you understand. It's not an issue of money. I have about 50 plus open to go orders right now and a full dining room of 150 people. Even if I told the kitchen to put your order first, which is unfair to everybody else, I could not get an order that large out before 7pm. Karen in the most snooty, mocking, high-pitched voice. Aw, you have 50 orders in a full dining room? Aw, good for you. You guys are doing so well. I don't think you understand. My daughter is going on national television in 15 minutes and I need food for everyone. Me? Well, 
I'm sorry I can't fulfill that order for you. Have a great night. And then they hang up. Yeah, oh, sorry, you're confused. I don't actually care that your daughter's going on TV. <laughs> We're a super busy restaurant and that's not how that works. God, people are so annoying. And yeah, on that note, let's read one more. No, I won't move my bar seat just because. Normally, if I'm in a random bar doing random drinking, like airports or hotels, and someone asks me to scooch over to fit their party, no prob. But if I'm at a sports bar and scooching would mean I can't see the game, uh, no. Enter Karen, puts her hand on my shoulder and screams into my ear, Hey, can you move so my husband and I can sit together? No, I can't see the game then. She's about two inches away from my ear and screams, What? Are you serious? I'm gonna sit here in the one seat next to you and talk to you until you move. Nope, I'm not moving. Song comes on. You know the one. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. She screams, Jokers to the right at me. I decide a middle finger is warranted. She and husband eventually lose interest. My team ended up winning too. The top comment says, I would have told her everything my kid has ever told me about Minecraft. Yeah, like, hey, you don't want to leave, but I can annoy you. I quit. Karen reported me to HR for it. I was the director of sales operations for a 40 million a year software company. Karen was on my team. We processed purchase orders. Karen had a small vehicle accident that put her in a neck brace. She also needed once weekly physical therapy appointments and had some restrictions on duties. All of which I accommodated, no issue. Despite meeting her needs, Karen decided that coming into work was optional. HR noticed that she was repeatedly absent from work for three to four days at a time. Multiple weeks in a row. They didn't give me details. Details, but they told me that documentation from her doctor did not justify all of these absences. To make matters worse, Karen would never even give notice that she was going to be out and sometimes would just no-show without ever calling, nor even indicate how long she would be out. HR eventually told Karen that she needed to either attend work more regularly or get a doctor to sign off on short-term disability. This worked for me. I'd rather Karen take extended time off so I could get a temp to take her responsibilities than be absent frequently without any warning. Karen's original doctor would not document a need for disability. She bragged to the team that she found a doctor that would sign off on anything. So Karen went on disability and I was able to get a temp to cover her until she returned. Even though co-workers who kept in contact told me that Karen was going to clubs and dancing and such, I didn't care. That was between her and HR. For now at least the work was getting done. The time period of Karen's short-term disability eventually expired. At this point she either had to come back to work or go on long-term disability so I could replace her permanently. Karen's sign anything doctor would not give her documentation for long-term disability. So Karen grudgingly came back to work. She went back to being absent all the time. She also refused to do even the basic duties of her job. I went to HR and I told them things were not working out and I wanted to replace her. They were on board with this plan. HR brought Karen in for the talk, but Karen flipped out and said that she would sue. Suddenly HR was not on board. It didn't matter that Karen really had no legal standing. Just the threat of a lawsuit made HR decide it was more important to make Karen happy than to let me have a functional operations department. In one instance, I asked Karen to do purchase order review and she complained to HR about me bossing her around. I am her boss. HR told me that I could no longer give assignments to work duties to Karen. What the hell? When I said that was fine, as long as they let me hire someone else to do Karen's job, they refused to give me a requisition for a new employee. This went on for months and Karen learned pretty fast that she could complain to HR about anything and get her way. You would not even believe the accommodations that she was given. Meanwhile, she made Made no effort to hide that she was not really injured anymore, was barely coming to work, but was still getting paid. She even encouraged other team members to take advantage of this loophole that she found. Then one day during month end crunch, Karen had not come in or called, so I called and asked her if she planned to work that day. It was a simple question carefully crafted to be neutral in tone. She told HR that I'd harassed her with my phone call. I got written up, so I immediately put in my two week notice. I'm not going to deal with my career being messed up by a woman who had worked maybe be six days in a month, especially when I gave 60 to 70 hours a week to the company. With me suddenly gone, the sales operation fell apart. Purchase orders were not going through. To address this emergency, a company senior VP took over sales until my replacement could be found. HR was certainly not going to tell this guy that he could not give Karen duties. So Karen actually had to work. About a month after I quit, Karen got my home number and called me, furious that she actually had to work. She told me that she was going to report me to HR for a company that I no longer work 
before. And sure enough, she did exactly that. I kept in touch with members of my old team and they told me that she was laughed out of the HR office. But his work gets absurd. Karen called me again, cursing and screaming and threatening me and demanded that I give her the contact information for HR at my new company. She was going to report me to a department that had no idea who she was, nor had any jurisdiction over her complaints. The stupidity was unbelievable. <laughs> and I giggled at her right up until I hung up and blocked her. The last I heard, Karen was finally fired, got zero unemployment benefits and ended up moving her and her kids in with her mum. Oh my god, is this the worst HR in the world? What were they doing? That's so frustrating. Like, you're working so hard at this place and you're working with people like this and an HR department that's going to do stuff like this and listen to this Karen. And yet, yeah, sounds like you're better off being out of there. And the audacity for them to be upset at you because now they have to do their job. Like, oh, now I actually have to go to work and do what I'm getting paid to do. How terrible. So ridiculous. These stories are so fun to read, but I can't even imagine being in this situation. The next one is called, No, Karen, I didn't buy a seat for your bag. Story from about eight years ago. I was taking the Amtrak out to see family for the holidays. So most seats are booked and thus were assigned on your ticket and such due to how full it was. Also, this was literally a midnight train, which is important to remember later. Anyway, being one of the last ones to board, I get over to my seat and I find this decrepit old woman and her purse taking up the two seats. I look up at the seat number, look down at my ticket to make sure I didn't get the numbers mixed up. Lo and behold, my seat was playing host to Karen's bag. So I politely asked her to move it, explaining that it was my seat. She called BS. I showed her my ticket. She told me to piss off and called an attendant. Naturally, when I showed the attendant my ticket, she was told to move her bag, glaring daggers at me as I smugly sat down. Now for bonus petty revenge, I whip out my trusty laptop and I decide to play a few computer games. Now the night trains did have quiet hours for obvious reasons, but I had my sound muted and per the attendant that Karen tried to call on me, laptop usage isn't prohibited during quiet hours, provided that the user has the sound muted or has headphones in. I probably would have gone to sleep if Karen hadn't tried to block me from my seat that I paid for, but the extra hour of SimCity was totally worth it. Just to stick it to that decrepit old hag clutching her stupid purse that I wasn't willing to donate my seat to, I hope she had a very unhappy holiday. Most of the entitled people stuff that we read about, they don't have to sit down next to the entitled person. Good on you for sitting next to them the entire time, playing Sims on your computer. You made the most of a bad situation. But yeah, what was their plan? Because if you said that it's your seed, the second that you show your ticket that says it is your seed, there's nothing they can do about it. And that's what happened. I don't understand what goes through their heads. Like, no, my bag is going to sit here, not you. The next one is called Screamed At By Karen In The Cinema Because Of My Wheelchair. I saw two last night in a posh art house theater with my girlfriend. The crowd were mostly well to do elderly white people. Dutifully, I turned off my phone as instructed. At the end of the film, Karen appears out of nowhere in my face, furious, pointing down at me and shouting that I've been playing with my lights the whole film. I turned on my electric wheelchair only twice to readjust my position. I pointed out that it was not my phone, assuming this was the misunderstanding. But no, she'd understood well enough. Before I knew it, the polite retirees around me sprung to my defense and put Karen squarely back in her place. So, to Cinema Karen, I'd just like to send out a big fat F you. And to all the probably normally non-confrontational kind of folks that stuck up for me, thank you. We need zero tolerance on these BRCHs. Edit, I'm so overwhelmed and encouraged by all your support. If this had happened to me after my spinal cord injury, I would really have lost my confidence to leave the house. Thank you. Oh, that's so awesome that everybody stuck up for you. Like, so they should to be fair, but it's good that you were surrounded by good people. And yeah, get out of here, Cinema Karen. Damn right, we need zero tolerance on these BRCHs. I can't believe that's a sentence I just said. The next one is called, I lost a friend because I called her a Karen. So this friend and I are basically friends through our young daughters. She was telling me a story about how she was at a kid's baseball game outside and how the ice cream truck was being too loud. She was saying that she was going to call a noise ordinance on them next time. And I laughed and said, don't be a Karen, that's embarrassing. She then flipped out on me about how calling her a Karen is anti-feminist and racist against white women. I'm a white feminist woman. I disagreed wholeheartedly with that narrative and was therefore dumped. So they're pretty much telling you that they are a Karen <laughs> and also being a Karen in the process. Like they've obviously been called a Karen before and they don't like it. Like, no, you can't call me a Karen. It's anti-feminist and it's racist against white women. Sorry for saying that, okay? Relax a little bit. You don't want to be a Karen. The next one is called I Ruin Karen's Social Life with My Weird Horizontal Mumbo Game. So my wife and I were having a dinner date a few months ago. Seated near us was a much younger couple. Like any younger and we could have been their parents. I'm not a nosy person, but the wife and I have been 
together for almost 20 years. There are gaps in conversation when you've been together this long. They're obviously just getting to know each other. Must have been on like a Tinder date or something. On the ride home, my wife and I got to talking about not remembering what it was like to date each other. We decided next chance we got that we'd go on a Tinder date. We'd tell all the stories that we already know. What we do for work, favourite movies. We did it last weekend and it was fun and I think we both picked up on some things that we had overlooked over the years. And then our kid got brought up by my wife and I rolled with it. Asked about the father and such. The game changed. She said that with all the stress and home and at work that she doesn't feel the spark. Things are too vanilla. She needs to try something new and adventurous. I start pouring myself into this fantasy. Listing things I wish I could do with my wife but she's always so tired and doesn't seem up for it. At this point we're holding hands, leaning across the table. Going over every special occasion act that we're going to go through with each other. Well, this is where my karma hits from listening to the kids on their Tinder date. A wild Karen appears. She starts jumping her asses for being cheaters. My wife told her that it was none of her business and if some stranger would bang her like she's about to, <laughs> she might not be such a arch. Called my wife a dirty you know what. I told the woman I'm really hoping that she's the dirtiest one for me tonight. Well, she caused enough of a scene that the manager came out and made her and her friend leave. My wife and I kept on playing our game, finished our meal and went home. We had the house to ourselves. I thought this was the end of it, but no. Karen took a creep shot of us before she came to confront us. She then posted it to some cheaters busting Facebook group with our city's name and the restaurant, the day and the time. We have a mutual friend because a guy I work with saw it. They're all laughing at me for cheating on my wife with my wife. We got a pretty good laugh about it. I messaged the group mods. After one look at my profile, it's pretty obvious that I'm married to the woman in the photo. They took her post down and they put something up about false accusations can hurt as much as cheating. She went full Karen in that thread until they banned her. She spent a lot of time posting. She isn't one of my friends, but I heard that people were giving her a hard time on her personal profile about being nosy and not knowing all the facts. Same friend said that he saw her at a community event and got his wife to troll her. His wife went up to this Karen, arms locked with her teenage son, and begged her not to tell her husband that she's with a man young enough to be her son. I guess this woman is a bitter divorcee and is always judging people that she thinks are you know what. Now she's catching a lot of crap for making things up. I kind of feel bad for her. My wife and I never told anyone about the game we're playing. Everyone just thinks that this lady had some kind of nervous break seeing two happy married people. Wow, yeah, mind your own business. Why do people feel like they should do stuff like this? Like, oh, I don't know who you are and I don't know anything about you, but I'm going to get upset about you and I'm also going to post a photo of you two together to a Facebook group. Like, this is what they get for not minding their own business. So frustrating. The next one is called, I just bought a grill and Karen tried to buy it off me as I loaded it into my truck. This is the first time I've actually been able to post here and I'm pretty excited and aggravated about it. Well, today I went to Walmart to buy a few odds and ends at last minute Christmas shopping. This is from 11 months ago, by the way. I've been in the market for a new grill, so anytime I find myself at Lowe's or Walmart, I try to scope out any good deals. Today I was able to find a deal. It was a $450 grill with a rollback price of $280. It's a nice pellet grill with smartphone temperature regulations and all the bells and whistles. There was only one left and it was a floor model. As soon as I saw it, I rolled it over onto the register and I cashed out. I proceeded to roll the pellet grill out to my truck. I've got a small 2022 Ford Maverick. Those unfamiliar with the truck, it's a very small unibody truck. I was not able to fit the entire grill in my truck, so I got a screwdriver to disassemble the table on the side so I could get it to fit. This is where Karen comes in. Karen approaches me as I'm disassembling the grill and says, Wow, is that one of those new pellet grills? I was unaware of her intentions and I stupidly said, Yeah, it was the last one and I got it on a rollback deal. Karen, Well, it looks like you aren't really able to fit that in your truck. Me, Yeah, not when it's fully assembled. I just have to pop out a few screws and it'll slide in. You know, my husband could really use a new grill like that. And you said you got it on rollback, so you don't have to go through the hassle. I'll give you $200 cash for it. It'll save you the embarrassment of trying to return it because you can't fit it in your car. Ma'am, I paid $280 for this grill. I'm definitely not interested in selling it to you. Karen, Yeah, but $200 is a good deal because you just damaged it. They probably wouldn't even buy it back from you. Me? Well, no, it isn't damaged. I took this part off so I could fit it in my truck. But I'm not selling the grill to you. But I just watched you break it. $200 is a good deal. At this point, I closed my tailgate and I sat down in the seat of my truck. Karen proceeded to pull out $200 out of her wallet and went to the back of my truck, opened my tailgate and tried taking the bungee cords off. I got out of the truck, threw her money back at her and I told her that if she touches my truck again, I'm calling the police. She made one last statement as she staggered to pick up her money. You know, this is the holiday season. I can't believe you're treating me like this. God would be extremely disappointed in you. I hope you have a crappy, lonely 
suddenly Christmas. Karen then walked off and went into Walmart. F you, Karen. Edit. I noticed someone pointed out that they didn't know how I got her $200. I mistakenly left that part out. While I was getting in my truck, she threw it at me, which led to me getting back out of my truck and throwing it at her. You only just bought the thing and they're already trying to convince you to sell it. Imagine doing that. How embarrassing. Like, no. I don't know if you realize this, but we're outside a shop. I actually just bought this, which means I do want it. And I'm not going to sell it to you in the bloody car park. That's so funny, but so annoying. And yeah, you absolutely broke it. Them trying to convince you to sell it is hilarious. The next one is called Karen is pissed off because her name was printed in a newspaper without her permission. I work as a newspaper reporter for a small paper. I recently wrote an article mentioning the name of a new school board member. The article was not about her, did not quote her and was in no way, shape or form defaming or dishonest. Her name was simply mentioned in passing among several other names. She called my desk and is livid. She tells me I have absolutely no right to publish her name without her express permission and threatens to sue if an apology isn't published. She also demands to speak to the managing editor. I happily oblige. Of course, she informed by the editor in short order that she's holding an elected position and as such her existence and position are already in the public forum. Oh, what? She's also informed that there's no legal obligation to notify people that their name will be published in a newspaper and that's apparently when she really flew up the handle. She told my boss that every single person, no matter who they are, should be made aware if their name is going to be published and that they should also have a chance to read the article before it goes to print. My boss laughed at her and then hung up. Get out of here, Karen. If you don't want people to know who you are, then don't run for an elected position. Yeah, what? That's so funny. I lost it when they said she's informed by the editor in short order that she's holding an elected position and as such, her existence and position are already in the public forum and they're getting upset about this. We need to read more stuff like this. The next one is called Sister-in-law dumps her bratty kids on others every vacation. My sister-in-law, known as Peg Bundy with money, is a stay-at-home mother who's raising my two nephews while sucking every penny and then some out of my very hard-working brother. My older nephew is mildly autistic and my younger nephew is ADHD with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 H's. She's taken the path of least resistance in being a parent. Kid whines, I want, and instead of no, just gives it to them. They're rude, they're entitled, and they're poorly behaved, especially when she's around as she will screech at whoever corrects their behavior. You want their parent? We will handle it. Okay, fine. Fast forward to today, when for the eighth year in a row, they've hijacked my week at the family cabin. She screeched at me again. Scenario, my elderly aunt and my mother and my partner and I are early risers. We have a quiet breakfast in the kitchen and the eldest nephew busts in being loud and interrupting any attempt at conversation. General rude behavior unrelated to autism, though that is the excuse. I taught for many years and autistic children are not inherently rude. It is learned behavior. It was decided before the brat came down that the four adults were going to go into town to the post office and the flea market. As we're preparing to leave, Peg Bundy arises at the crack of 11, comes down and starts dictating that the eldest nephew should go with because he needs to get out and do something. I said, no, there's only room for four, but she can take him in later. Screeching, I'm not going in, you need to step up. You're his uncle, you need to learn how to deal with autistic children. He's almost an adult. More screeching. My reply was, well, then I won't go, as there's only room for four. More screeching ensues along the same lines, ending with them saying to teenage Brad, well, you just stay away from Uncle Will for the rest of the week. My response is, okay. She has no idea the gift that she's just given me, just what I've been waiting for for the last 16 years. Though the brat is currently announcing loudly that I'm texting something. He's also an unrepentant tattletale as well as a sneak thief. Wow, the ironing is delicious. Ha, <laughs> the ironing is delicious. The word is irony. Like the top comment says, you need to use her own words against her. Turner, you aren't their parent. We'll handle it. Into, I'm not the parent. You will handle it. Yeah, the fact that they started yelling at you and telling you to step up. How rich is that? Karen mad that I got my food first. My wife is hungry for McDonald's breakfast. I go to the drive-thru to get her the breakfast and I get told to pull into a designated park spot and wait about a minute when another car pulls into another designated spot to my right. It's the Karen. I was about another two minutes and a worker comes up with my food and thanks me for my patience. While I'm grabbing my food, I hear, why is he getting my food? The worker responds, this is his order. Your order's coming. She screeches, why did he get his first? I'm starving and I've been waiting. The worker walks over 
over to the Karen and simply informs her, Ma'am, you ordered a 20-piece chicken nugget, chicken sandwiches and burgers. We serve breakfast until 11 on Sundays. It's 9.40 and she starts screeching even more. I would have stayed for the entirety of it, but my pregnant wife is scarier than a Karen. Edit to specify it's a wide drive through two lanes and two speakers that merge into one. She may have started her order first, but I ordered mine in an empty lane. I can't even imagine how often you have to deal with stuff like this if you work at a place like McDonald's. I feel like stuff like this would happen there like 25 times a day. Like, oh, somebody else that's super rude and entitled. That's the 42nd one today. Karen hurls abuse at a 13-year-old before her husband tries to grab him across the counter. So about two weeks before Christmas, there's an event that was happening just outside the mall entrance nearest to us later that evening. Except neither I or the previous ship supervisor knew about it, so I don't prepare any more stuff for cooking, hoping to use what's left for the rest of a quiet night. So it's just me and two juniors, and once the event ends, all these families come inside to have dinner before heading home. Instead of going to the food court on the other side of the mall, they see that we're open and they head to us. Very fast, we're swamped in cooking with about 15 to 20 large orders and more on the way which we have no prep for. I'm cooking with the more experienced junior while the newest one, 13, is handling the orders as he doesn't know how to cook yet. I start hearing a woman and her husband raising their voices demanding for their food as they've been waiting nearly 20 minutes and I can hear my junior telling them that it's nearly done and we're just a bit flooded with orders at the moment. I'm actively walking out of the kitchen at this point to tell them that we're plating their food now when I start hearing her go off her tree about how it's not freaking good enough and other colourful things at my junior. He then says what all CS workers wish they could say and tells her if it's not good enough then she can piss off. Her husband immediately pulls the hanging plexiglass aside and practically lunges at him over the counter shouting about how dare he say that to his wife. I pull my junior away from him as he does that and I tell the husband that I'm giving their money back and they need to leave before I call security. They scream at me for a bit as I do actually call security but quickly leave when they show up. Thankfully the other patrons were more understanding and the owner came down 10 minutes or so later to help out as he checked in on the cameras and saw how screwed we were. Edit because a lot of people were asking this happened in Australia where the minimum age is 13. He only does 3 hour shifts for 3 evenings a week and we don't treat him as if he has to perform at adult levels. He was a kid from one of the owner's friends getting some work experience and extra pocket money doing half shifts on what was supposed to be quiet evenings. The owner has contacted police though nothing has come from that yet. Yet another person making the situation worse for everybody. Like oh what's that my food's taking a little bit longer because they're super busy. I better make the situation worse by getting angry and making a scene. Like come on what's that gonna achieve? A lady calls the cops on me for sitting with my service dog at the beach. Okay so this was a few months ago and my parents took me to the beach for the first time in two years so I obviously brought my psychiatric service dog Fairy Bell. Since I'm really bad with crowds and I have really bad panic attacks. Before we even entered there were two officers stationed in front and he stopped us and asked us if she's a service dog. I said yes and they asked what task she's trying to do and then said we were good so we went in. I end up sitting in the sand with Fairy Bell and out of nowhere a lady approached me from the other side of the beach screaming at me because her boyfriend is allergic to dogs. From the other side of the beach screaming at me because her boyfriend is allergic and dogs aren't allowed. My mum tried explaining but she decided to call the police even though they were already there. I ended up having a panic attack and my dog had to lay on my arm so I stopped scratching myself after I calmed down. I was too drained and I just wanted to go home but apparently she called on other people for other reasons too. Honestly what an awful experience. You had to go through all of this and for what? Like all you were trying to do was go to the beach and you have people like this. Yeah I'm sorry that happened to you that sucks. Like so rude for no reason. The next one is called Karen at Six Flags for yes to Texas. So I took my kids to Six Flags yesterday. After waiting in line at the concession stand for 20 minutes, we finally got to the front of the line. While I'm in the middle of placing my order for a chocolate Oreo sundae funnel cake, Karen walks to the front of the line with her cup and asks the cashier who was taking my order, is this where I get a free refill? The cashier ignored her and took my order. Karen asks again and the cashier says yes. So Karen just stands there waiting for someone to help her. A different cashier comes to the register and Karen asks her the same question. The cashier looks at her and says, yeah, but you'll have to go to the back of the line and wait. The cashier then sees my free refills cup and asks, so would you like a refill? Of course, I said yes. Karen looks dumbfounded and asks again, can I get my free refills here? The cashier looks at her again and says, yeah, but you'll have to go to the back of the line and wait like everybody else does. Karen looks at the line and then back at the cashier and then at me and then back at the line. After her brain finally processed that she's not the center of the universe, <laughs> she scoffed and walked away. She didn't even get in line for a refill. It wasn't super eventful or anything. But it was nice to see a pretentious Karen get put in a place. That's so funny.
funny, but so aggravating at the same time. Like, yeah, you're right. When they actually realize that they're not the center of the universe. Like, you're trying to tell me that I'm not more important than every other person ever. And I'm not the main character of the universe. What? That doesn't even make any sense. The next one is called Post Office Story. An actual quote that I heard at the post office yesterday. Um, I want to mail these boxes. Do I have to, like, hand them to you or something? Points to boxes she said on the ground at the back of the line. Across the room from where the post office employee was. Shaking my head. Props to the good old biker mustache having postal employee. With army tattoos who was obviously aware of the fact that it's apparently hard to be fired from the post office. Just stared at her with his I've murdered men with my bare hands look. And then whipped out a total smart ass response. Oh why no ma'am. You don't have to put the boxes on the scale like everybody else. We'll just guess the weight and read your mind where to send it. So then the Karen got butt hurt and started literally scoffing out loud that she had to go get the boxes herself as opposed to a postal employer getting them for her. These weren't large boxes and there weren't a lot of boxes. They were two small boxes that couldn't have weighed more than like a pound each maximum unless she was shipping gold bars. At one point she makes some comment like this is why only stupid people and social rejects join the army. Well good old boy didn't take kindly to that because when she finally made her slow entitled way back to him he told her she cut in front of the sweet old lady that he was helping now and she'd have to wait in line again since she got out of line. There were 30 people in line. The office was 20 minutes from closing. They had a miniature staring contest. The Karen was fish mouth naturally before Karen seceded and went to the back of the line. Good times. I don't know, you'd have to be there to appreciate the sheer snarkiness of the Karen's tone and the absolute screw it attitude of the postal worker. Text doesn't do it justice. Wow, they really said this is why only stupid people and social rejects join the army? What? <laughs> why are people like this? Wow, that one question could sum up everything we read on today's episode of Why Are People Like This? Choosing Beggars. <laughs> the next one says, I finally had a nasty Karen waste my time. Since I'm deaf, I rarely have to deal with annoying Karens because I rely on American Sign Language as an anti-Karen trick. But today, one went out of her way to get police involved. To start, I borrowed my dad's minivan. He's got a handicap plate, but since I don't have a handicap, deaf doesn't qualify for handicap parking. I park in normal spots instead. My dad was not with me today, so there's another reason not to park there. When I stopped at a Walmart store for a quick shop, I found an empty spot next to a handicap spot very close to the doors. I just got out when a Karen stopped behind my minivan and started yelling at me. I couldn't understand what she was saying and I used my anti-Karen trick, ASL. I signed, I can't understand you, but she kept yelling at me and pointing at the van. I ignored her and I went into the store. I came out about 15 minutes later to see her still blocking my minivan and a police car coming in. Thankfully for Officer Smiley, he seemed to be smiling a lot even with crappy Karen and 90 degree heat. He can use his lips well so I was able to understand him without needing ASL or deaf interpreter. It's when I found out that she called because I illegally parked in a non-handicap spot. I'm like, what? I explained that the minivan belonged to my dad who does use handicap spots but since he wasn't with me and I don't need a handicap spot, technically I'm not supposed to use handicap spots so I parked in a normal spot. Karen's reasoning was I had to use handicap spots because of a handicap plate and it was illegal for a car with a handicap plate to park in a non-handicap spot? Officer Smiley thought she was just mad because I had a great non-handicap spot in an otherwise crowded parking lot and she didn't want to walk halfway across the lot in this heat. Yeah, that probably is what it is. She was hoping I'd move like she demanded and her mind broke because I didn't move. I was free to go and I saw Officer Smiley hand her a ticket, I guess for misuse of 911 service. I still had to wait for her to move her car so I could go home and type this up. If you're the woman that has dark colored pixie cut hair driving a silver Camry who called the police on a deaf person in a Walmart parking lot today. F you. Yeah, I feel like they're 100% right though. I'm sure they're only upset because they had to walk a bit further, which if is the case is bloody ridiculous. Like these people wake up in the morning and they're like, oh, it's such a beautiful day. I'm gonna make everybody's day worse. <laughs> Reminder, 911 is only for emergencies. Yesterday we received a 911 call from a woman who was angry about the long drive through line at the new Burger King. We realized that you aren't you when you're hangry, but this is not a valid reason to call 911. Oh my god, somebody did that? Hello, police, can you please come down here? The Burger King line is so long. Like, no! <laughs> and what are you talking about? A holiday to Spain ruined by quote-unquote too many Spaniards in a Spanish hotel in Spain? This person asked why Spanish people can't go somewhere else for their holiday in Spain. And they're not joking? How are they not joking? Are they on their last brain cell? How do you even get upset about something like this without realizing how unbelievably ridiculous you're being. So on a comment about Margot Robbie
Robbie. I don't like that on press tour she's using her Aussie accent as if to let others know that she's a good actress or something because her American English sounds fine. Oh my god, what? <laughs> she lives and works in Hollywood and that's where she gets her massive income from. Drop the accent. How does somebody feel like they should say something like this? So ignorant. <laughs> There's no logic to any of these. You try to understand it and your head feels like it's gonna explode. Like, oh, what's that? You're Australian and you have an Australian accent? No, drop that accent though because you're obviously just putting it on. Unbelievable. The next one says, I put a Karen in her place this morning. This morning I had to make a Walmart run for some cat food and some coffee creamer. I head into a store and jump into a mobility cart and I start cruising my way towards the cat food. When I get there, I said the only bag of my brand that they have is the really big one and I'm not able to lift it on my own due to my bad back. So I hit the customer service button to get an associate over to me and I wait. Just as the Walmart guy comes around the corner, I greet him and I ask him if he could get the big bag of cat food into the scooter as well as a bucket of litter. He happily obliges but when he reaches for litter, a middle-aged lady calls out to him while snapping her fingers. I hate it when people snap at me to get his attention. He looks her way and tells her to hang on a moment that he's helping another customer. So she rushes up right next to me, like uncomfortably so, and starts nagging at this poor guy about how she needs help right this second, all while snapping her fingers right up in his face. I guess just to drive the point in further. I need help now, snap. Forget about this guy, snap. Come with me now, snap. Okay, I was done with this poor excuse for a human, so I stood up out of my scooter, my 6'3 and 425 pound frame instantly dwarfing her. Listen, B Arch, snaps in her face. Stop snapping your bloody fingers. Snaps again. Does he look like a dog to you? Snap. Stop being a you know what and scuttle your useless ass out of here. Snap. She flings really bad at that last snap. Mouth agape, she gives the associate a quick sorry and then takes off through gardening. I'm assuming to the store exit as that's the closest one. Sorry guys, nothing much to report after that. I sat back in the buggy, checked out and the guy helped me load my stuff into my car. And then I headed back home. Don't snap at people, it's very demeaning and rude. Yeah, that's so wild. I've never seen anybody do that. But yeah, that would be so unbelievably rude. Like they might as well whistle for them as well, like they're a dog or something. I thought maybe these stories would get less frustrating, but I think they've gotten worse. Managers have read it. What's a Karen experience like? What was your worst experience? The staff didn't know it at the time, but our ketchup dispenser was empty. A boy aged 10-ish was just smashing down on the handle trying to get ketchup, but none was being dispensed. A staff member noticed the kid smashing the ketchup dispenser, so I went out to see what was going on. Oh, the ketchup is empty. I'll get a new bag from the kitchen. Give me two minutes and I'll be right back with some new ketchup. I removed the empty container, take it back to the kitchen, clean the dispenser and place in a new bag. Take it out to the condiment stand and get met by Karen. Karen, why did you take the ketchup away from my son? Me, the ketchup was empty, so I replaced the bag. Karen, why did you take the ketchup away? Go get your manager. Me, uh, okay, one minute. I walk about two meters, turn around and introduce myself as the manager. Karen, why did you take the ketchup away from my son? Me, ma'am, please lower your voice. The ketchup was empty. I explained to your son that I needed to take it back to the kitchen to refill it. Karen, no, you didn't. I was standing here the whole time. You took the ketchup away from my son. Me, ma'am, please lower your voice. You were not with your son. He was here alone trying to get ketchup, which was empty. Karen, don't you tell me what to do. Do you know who you're dealing with? No, ma'am, please get your belongings and leave this establishment. Cue the screaming and yelling. Karen, I will not leave this establishment. I'm going to burn this place down. Other patrons are visibly upset with what they're witnessing. Police are called. Karen gives a statement. Police question me. I give a statement. The Karen told the police that I struck her son, pushed him out of the way, and moved the ketchup to an area in which her son couldn't get access to it. I disputed the claim and I offered to provide video evidence with sound of what actually happened. Police watch the video once, thank me, and then walk out of the eating area. Officer, ma'am, does your son have someone who can look after him? Karen, his father is at work right now. Officer, okay, you're under arrest for making threats and a false police report. More yelling threats and now tears. In the end, she was charged with making the false police report, but not the threats, and received a lifetime ban from not just our restaurant, but the entire mall our restaurant was located in. I felt kind of bad, not for the Karen, but for her son. He has to live with that. Oh my God, they made an issue that didn't exist. And it doesn't sound like the son was lying to their mum or something. They were like, you know what? I'm going to make a huge deal about literally nothing. Like there wasn't even a problem here. This is laughable, but it's also so sad and so not okay as well. Like don't do that to people. And yeah, same. I feel bad for the son. Oh, that was awful. The next one says, not a manager, but I used to work part-time at a bakery inside of a grocery store. I dealt with my fair share of Karens during this time. Just to paint this picture of how it'd work, we had a binder that had labels 
laminated copies of a hundred different designs that decorators did pretty often. A customer would look at the book, pick a design they wanted, and fill me in on the details of when they wanted it by, what size, what flavor, if any colors were necessary, etc. Our decorators will come in at 7am and stay for however long it took to complete their orders, so usually they were gone by early to mid-afternoon. The bakery closed along with the store at 9pm. One day, maybe around 8.15 or 8.20, a woman comes in and says she needs a cake. I figure that she's referring to the cake sitting in our cooler, which we keep at the ready in case anybody just wants something quick and simple. So I motion to the cooler and I ask her if she sees anything she likes. Apparently, I'm a brilliant comedian because she starts laughing and goes, no, sweetie, I need a wedding cake. All right, no big deal. I grab an order form and I take down her information and then I ask what day she needs it for. Tonight. Mind you, the store was shutting in 40 minutes, so even if I could decorate a cake, I wouldn't be able to help her. I tell her that there's no decorators present at the moment, but I could make sure it was ready for her first thing the next morning. She's clearly upset by this, but she says that'd be fine. I continue taking her order and ask her what size she'd like. Our bakery was not an upscale joint and our prices reflect that. Just about everything comes in frozen. So for our cakes, they come in a variety of predetermined sizes. She pulls out her phone and thrusts it into my face, saying whatever that is. On the screen is a very beautiful cake. Smooth white frosting, seven to eight tiers. Decorations made in fondant and blown sugar. Before I even continue taking the order and dash her hopes when she sees the finished product, I tell her that that just wouldn't be possible. I didn't mean to offend our decorators, but I told her the truth. Most of them were exceptionally gifted home bakers who didn't have formal training. In terms of a culinary program or a decorating school, I then politely refer her to a more upscale bakery that I knew of that's a lot more equipped to help her than we are. Then the dreaded six words came. Can I speak to your manager? At this point in time, I'd been working at that bakery for a little over a year, so I was capable enough to close the department on my own. As such, I was the only one there. I told her this, but I offered to leave her a note with the customer's name and number so my manager could call her tomorrow. Fine then, let me talk to a store manager. There were anywhere between one to three store managers who oversaw the entire grocery store and its departments on a staff night. So I go to our phone and page a store manager over to the bakery department. The whole time we're waiting, she's staring daggers into me. A manager I was fairly friendly with came over to the counter in a few minutes and asked me what the problem was. I briefed her before she went to talk to the customer. The second we get over there, the customer starts spewing lies about me, how I was rude and refusing to help her. I tried to defend myself, but the manager just told me to keep doing my closing workout back. 10 minutes later, she comes back shaking her head and rubbing her temples. That biatch was crazy. The customer service industry is a blast. Oh God, yeah, it sounds like it. How frustrating. And they wanted the cake the same night? The bloody audacity. That's so frustrating. And yeah, it sounds like you did the right thing. The next one says, happened before I became a manager, but once while I was serving at Steak and Shake, a customer had a coupon for a burger, fries, and a shake for a certain amount of money. I can't remember the price anymore. Anyway, on the coupon, it specifically stated that cheese on the burger was 39 cents up charge, although it did have a picture of a burger with cheese on it. Lady threw a fit in the dining room that I was treating her unfairly. It was false advertising, etc. I told her I agreed that it's false advertising with the picture, but the text specifically states the up charge, and unfortunately, I can't do anything about it. The lady at the next table over heard everything and literally got up and put 50 cents on the table to cover it and said something to the effect of, I'll pay for your damn cheese if you just shut up. This pissed the cheese lady off even more. My manager obviously sensed the issue and came out, took the cheese up charge off the bill. Like what the hell, Karen? We're starting the episode today with a post on Ask Reddit that says, what is the most Karen thing that a Karen has ever done to you personally? I deliver appliances for Best Buy. We had a woman call and complain that her fridge was not pre-cooled before it was delivered and that she had to wait for it to come down to temperature. No one in the office was prepared for that one. Wait, so it wasn't pre-cooled, but they had to wait for it to come down to temperature? What? <laughs> what do you mean pre-cooling a fridge? Why is it not already cold? And why does it not already have a whole bunch of groceries in it. This is an outrage. How do you even deal with a situation like this? Like, sorry, but what are you talking about? <laughs> the next one says, I worked at a grocery store and a co-worker put a 99 cent sticker on my shirt. We were two of maybe five employees, so we were all good friends and everything is funny when you gotta pass time on a shift. So I left it there. Some woman came through my line and asked me why I had a sticker on my shirt and I just kind of laughed it off. She asked me if I thought it was funny and I was like, not really, but sorta. She asked me if my 
my co-worker put it there, to which I responded yes. She told me she was going to speak to the store owner because it was disrespectful to behave that way at work. She told me to call my manager and I did, but he was a super cool guy and he knew the lady was an idiot. She talked to the store owner and my manager about firing me to no avail. She accomplished nothing and was just being a you know what, the end. Yeah, and oh my god, how common is stuff like this? Terrifyingly common. Like, yeah, I know this isn't even an issue, but I'm going to make it an issue and waste everybody's time and get upset about nothing. Do they legitimately have nothing better to do or something? I feel like that's all it is. They have no idea how to manage their emotions and they're bored. The next one says, I used to work at a fast food place in a theme park when I was 18. Karen held up the line because she was demanding us to assemble a food for her daughter, which we aren't allowed to do because we go by a menu. My daughter can't have that. Well, what can you do for me? Do you want her to starve? As some of the most irritating lines I ever encountered. Do you want her to starve? Oh my god, imagine saying that. Being hungry is not starving, okay? And second of all, if they were starving and you're not going to buy them some food, what are you doing? You can't go to a place like this or a restaurant or something or like anywhere that serves any food and be like, oh, what's that? You don't sell the thing that I want. Well, you should probably make it for me, okay? And then to get angry when they don't, so entitled. A Karen told me that I couldn't work on my car in my own garage at noon because she didn't want my fast looking car to influence her sons to be a hooligan like you. So you have to have the sort of car that they want you to have and they get to choose whether or not you modify it because you're a hooligan and a bad influence to their son. That's something else about Karens and entitled parents. If they're bad parents, they just blame it on everybody else. Like, yeah, I know this is my responsibility, but no, you actually need to not have a certain car because of my son. Nah, and the fact that you even had the audacity to think that you could say that is unbelievable. A Karen told me that I needed to leave the gym because I made her son feel like only fat people go to the gym. What do you mean that's a real person? How could somebody ever say something like this? And once again, they're blaming other people for their own parenting. Like obviously what they said was awful, but they're also saying that you should change your life because of their child. Get out of here. Imagine not only being this rude, but also this entitled. I can't imagine that. When I worked at a bakery, Karen bought a chocolate cupcake and ate half of it. Karen then asked me if she could return her half-eaten chocolate cupcake, not because she didn't like it, but because she wanted to exchange it for half a vanilla cupcake. Quite unquote, something less decadent. Like most bakeries, we did not sell cupcakes by the half. She became offended when I asked if she wanted to purchase a vanilla cupcake. No, I want it for free. <laughs> like going to a restaurant and only eating half of your meal and then being like, hey, I only really ate half of this, so I feel like I shouldn't pay full price. Like what do they expect them to do with the half-eaten cupcake? Some people are so funny for all the wrong reasons. When I was working retail, this one woman had a big bag of coupons. Most of them were unusable because they were expired or they were duplicates. She berated me because the system was rejecting most of the coupons. She called me stupid among other names, telling me that I just wasn't doing it right. Then as a typical Karen would, she asked to speak to my manager. My manager came and asked what the problem was. The women ranted about how incompetent I was because I didn't know how to scan a coupon. My manager looked at the coupons and the coupons were the problem, not me. My manager went off on the customer for being disrespectful to me and told the customer to leave the store. I hated working there, but I'm so grateful that I didn't have managers that totally didn't go by the customer is always right rule and weren't afraid to stand up for their employees. That was just one of many incidents. Do people like this wake up in the morning and just say, you know, I'm going to be really awful today. I'm going to cause problems that don't exist. I'm going to be rude for no reason. And I'm going to show the world how entitled I am. But yeah, 100%, at least you have a good manager. One that does stand up for you against people like this. I can't even imagine having to deal with people like this. I don't feel like I could handle it. Like, are you being serious? The next one says, a Karen came up to my register and asked for the price of a protein bar. Every item in the store had a physical price tag because we didn't have scanners at the register. I took it from her. I flipped it over and I let her know that it was $2.50 before tax. She asked me how much the case would be. Normally we did discounts for cases, but they had to be ordered ahead of time. So I started explaining that we couldn't do a discount unless she cut me off aggressively and hissed. I didn't ask for a discount. So I typed in $2.49 times 12 added tax and I told her the final price. She stared me down for a few minutes before asking me to get my manager. Once my manager arrived, she spent literally 10 minutes tearing into me, describing me as the least helpful person ever, talking about my bad attitude and complaining about how awful and rude I was. Oh my god. The audacity. I was working nearly full time 
time, 35 and a half hours a week, and commuting to school over an hour away, four days a week. This lady took the time out of her day to break me down to the point that I started crying. Thanks, Karen. I still remember you. I hope you enjoyed your bloody protein bar. Yeah, it's so sad that people are like this. And the worst part is how unnecessary it is. Like, do you have to be so rude? They act like their life work is to bother people. No, it is my duty to be awful. The next one says, a Karen asked for my manager's personal cell phone number to complain that I, seven months pregnant at the time, would not carry a refrigerator that she hadn't even paid for in the cost of her room up to her second story room. We didn't have an elevator rather than just accept the upgrade for free because she didn't want to unpack her stuff. She refused to believe that we had rooms without fridges and I was just being fat and lazy. When I refused to give her the cell phone number, she asked for corporate's number. I wrote it down on a sticky note with a smiley face. She came down later and asked to move rooms. I made her pay the difference. What? They expected you to move a fridge upstairs while you're seven months pregnant? It's still too much of an ask, even if you weren't seven months pregnant. But that's unbelievable to ask you to do this. A Karen left her card in the FPOS machine at the McDonald's I was managing as a teenager. Rang me to say that I needed to drive it out to her, that I ruined her night, ruined her family's night, owed her free food and that she'll be laying a formal complaint when I refused all of the above. She showed up three quarters of an hour later with steam blowing out of her ears asking for her card back. That was the last we heard from her. It needs to be driven out to them. What? You didn't ruin anybody's night? Oh, how frustrating. And laying a formal complaint? For what? Doing their job? Oh, that's so funny but so sad at the same time. The next one says, working retail one afternoon and here comes Karen with a return. At first glance, it's no big deal. Just coming in to return a shirt. She walks up to the register, hands me the receipt to start processing and we exchange a pleasant greeting. I take the shirt out of the bag to examine it and it's beyond disgusting. There were brown sweat stains all over it. From the pits to the stomach to the shoulder, it looked like whoever wore it rolled around in mud or some nonsense. I proceed to tell Karen that I can't return the product because it had clearly been used and that only unused and resellable items could be returned. Karen threw a fit, started screaming at me and accusing me of calling her a liar. I hold up the shirt and I point to the brown pit stains and say, Karen, can't you see this stain? Oh man, did that make it worse? She continues making a huge scene and demands to see the manager. Newsflash, Karen, I am the manager and I'm not budging. After 20 or so minutes of complaining, she finally leaves saying that she'll be complaining to corporate and he's going to get me fired. Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward a few days, a guy walks into the store, finds the first store associate that he can and immediately asks for me by my name. Uh-oh, here we go again. Anyway, my associate brings the guy over to where I'm standing and I politely greet him. The guy spends the next 10 minutes apologizing for his crazy wife, Karen, that verbally abused my staff and I a few days prior. Apparently, the guy went to the beach and did some sort of CrossFit training in the sand. Karen knows all of this and she was at the class with him. The guy ended up not liking the shirt for some reason and Karen thought she could pull a fast one on us by making a scene. Yeah, think again, Karen. Wow, so they knew that their partner got all dirty in this shirt and they're like, you know what? I feel like I could probably return this. <laughs> like, I'm sorry that you had to deal with this, but it's so funny. Actually, no, it's not funny, but their thought process is. Like, the fact that they think they can do this is funny. Actually having to deal with them, though, not so funny. The next one says, my sister-in-law is the biggest Karen I've ever met. Complains in almost every restaurant that we go to. But this one time that we were moving house and my bro asked me to help, I was staying at their place for the delivery truck that was going to arrive early in the morning. We were having drinks and my bed and mattress were on the floor in the living room. At around 1.15, I said, I think I'm going to go to bed. She replied, are you kicking me out of my own living room? Not realizing that she's crazy, I joke, yeah, I guess I am. She said, no one does that. And even though she'd finished her last drink, made herself two cups of tea, she didn't go to bed until after 2.30. She told me the next day that she stayed up to show that no one tells her what to do. What? <laughs> so bloody rude and awful. You have a guest over in your house and they're sleeping on your living room floor and it's 1.15 in the morning. They want to go to sleep and to prove a point, you stay there and annoy them for like what? Almost a couple more hours? Like, yeah, what's the thought process here? Oh, I'm really going to show them being awful and making them uncomfortable like the worst host ever. I worked at a home improvement store for a while in college. I was a cashier in the garden section. This woman pulls up on the curb in a no parking zone, grabs her fertilizer and soil. After I check out, she goes ballistic that I didn't help her load her car and she was going to report me to managers. Due to company policy, I wasn't allowed to. Other employees were though. Her face mole was shaking and everything. Over a bag of 
soil that weighed under 10 pounds and a handle of fertilizer. Okay, so we've learned today that being a Karen means being awful, unnecessarily rude, and hugely overreacting for no reason. Like, yeah, imagine getting this upset about this. It doesn't even make sense. They must already be so angry. The next one is called Gym Karen. Today, I went to the gym to do my normal post-work workout, which is my favorite part of the day. I work in a men's prison and I wear a uniform with boots and my hair under my hat. My normal work clothes, I get into the women's locker and Karen does a double take when she sees me. I will admit, I don't look very girly. I look just like my father and with the hat, I look even more like him. I don't mind, I'm used to it. I go to unpack my bag and I start getting undressed and she tells me that I'm in the wrong locker room, that the men are down the hall. I tell her very slowly that I'm in the right room, that if she doesn't believe me, she can look at my driver's license. She starts yelling at me and leaves the room. I sigh and I know she's going to the front desk. I quickly get dressed and I lock my stuff up knowing that the ladies at the desk know who she's talking about. I walk towards the front desk and I call one of the ladies by name and say hi. She smiles brightly and says hi. Have a good workout. Karen was 10 shades of red. Oh, these people are so annoying. Why do something like this, you know? Update. Today I had my boxing class and when I was done before I left, I ran into the manager of the gym. She asked if I was okay after what happened and I told her I was good. Told her I dealt with worse at work. She told me that she had a long talk with the woman and revoked her membership and donated the rest of her fees to our local gay community center. Karma came back and got the Karen. I also dropped five pounds. I want to say thank you to everyone for the messages and the support. You guys are awesome. Thank you all. Yeah, sorry that you had to deal with this. At least it had a good ending. It would have been better if it didn't even happen because it definitely didn't need to happen. The next one is called a group of Karens try to skip out on a restaurant bill over hollandaise sauce. The place I work at is a hole in the wall restaurant in a really small farming town. Think of Dog River from the show Corner Gas and it really describes the vibe of the place. The outside is pretty run down since the upstairs tenants are car farmers so there's broken down cars all over the property. The food is really good and it's become the meeting place for a lot of locals, mostly farmers and old timers. The interior of the place is really cute and it has an old fashioned vibe. The food is amazing in my opinion and the prices are pretty cheap. So we get a group of three middle aged women come in and they're instantly complaining about the outside of the place being messy and run down looking. I guess they're from a nearby city and they saw that our restaurant has excellent reviews on Google and they wanted to try it out. The server kindly told them that the restaurant has no control over what the outside of the place looks like. Made a it's a good thing you don't have to eat outside joke and the women got offended and complained that we weren't taking their suggestion seriously. They all ordered Eggs Benedict and one of them asked for it to be made without hollandaise. They also complained about service being slow but given that we were pretty slammed that day and we only have one cook we were doing our best. The lady that wanted no hollandaise sauce then came to the counter and rudely told us to add hollandaise sauce but she wanted it on the side because she wasn't sure if she liked it. We offered to let her sample some but she refused. Once their food was served she tried to send back the sauce but the server told her that we couldn't take it off the bill because we can't serve the sauce to somebody else. She complained but the server stuck to her guns and told her that next time try the sample when it's offered if she isn't sure that she's gonna like something. We will usually let people sample stuff so this exact scenario doesn't happen. It was close to closing so we stopped serving new customers and started doing our closing duties. We did not stop serving people who were already there, however. The women all of a sudden got up and left and we realized that they hadn't paid yet. The server chased them outside and told them they forgot to pay. They told the server that since we closed while we were serving them, they thought they didn't have to pay. Oh yeah, right. The server told them to pay and they told the server that since the hollandaise sauce wasn't taken off the bill, they weren't paying. It's not optional. The server told them once again that they had to pay for the food they ordered and since there was nothing wrong with the sauce, it wasn't coming off the bill. The server threatened to call the police if they didn't pay and if they did leave, she'd record their license plate and they would be banned from the restaurant as well. They reluctantly paid and of course didn't tip. I still don't understand how they thought they could have gotten away without paying. They kept on saying, you're closed, we don't have to pay. Yeah, what was going through their head? Like as if when they said that you guys were going to be like, oh yeah, okay, no worries, you don't have to pay. If you were working somewhere like this, it would be so hard not to get so angry at them. Like how dare you come into a place where everybody else is happy having a good time and deliberately be so awful. I hope they banned them anyway. In trouble with a Karen for sitting in my seat on an airplane. I was flying last week and I got up to use the bathroom and the girl behind me is giving me a death glare. I didn't think anything of it and I used the bathroom. I get back and this girl angrily explains to me that she's trying to sleep on the tray which is connected to my seat and that I'm shaking the seat. I assured her that I was not shaking the seat, that I was merely using it and that sometimes the seat is gonna move, such as when I got up to use the bathroom.
bedroom or lean down to get something or adjust my posture. She was not having it. Insistent that I was being so rude using my chair which she was apparently claiming was now her pillow. She called for a flight attendant and angrily explained the situation. The flight attendant responded, Ma'am, what do you want me to do? Ask him not to use his chair. He's allowed to use his chair. Unbelievable. I wasn't even reclining. Yeah, that is unbelievable. Absolutely no patience and understanding. They're like, you know what? No, I'm furious and I'm going to make sure you know it. Even though my anger is completely unreasonable. I don't care. I got back at the rude Karen in my line. I was a grocery checker in the 90s. One day around noon, I was working the 10 items or less and cash only express line that was used by so many people who were just grabbing a quick sandwich for lunch. So it was important to keep out people who had carts full of groceries. There was one other regular check stand open across from me that had one person being checked out with a large cart full. I didn't have anyone in my line at the time. Karen pulls up to the other check stand with a heaping cart and notices me standing there. She asks me if I can check her out. I tell her, no, sorry, I have to be available for people grabbing lunch. Over the next 30 seconds, she just stared at me and then pulled her cart up to my check stand and started putting all of her things on my check stand and says, you're not doing anything. You can check me out. So I was kind of stuck. So I tried to check her out as fast as I could and I didn't say much and wouldn't you know it, pretty soon I had a line of about five people standing there with their sandwiches and cokes glaring at me. Remember, it was a cash line. So I'm finishing her order. Karen takes out her checkbook and writes a check. Mind you, she didn't start writing it until I was about done. More delay. This was her big mistake. Her address was on the check. So on my lunch break, I got the subscription cards from all the magazines and I proceeded to subscribe her to just about every magazine we carried. And I always checked the two years bill me later option. I even signed her up for the Columbia Music Club and I picked the very worst records. Weeks later when she started getting all of the mags and bills for them, there's no way she would connect it to the checker that she was rude to. I was probably one in a long string of cashiers that she was rude to. Winner, me. Yeah, well, that's right. If they do this to you, they're probably rude to every person they interact with in a shop. So there'd be so many different people that it might have been. You can guarantee that if they treated you like this, that they treat other people the same. It's so frustrating. Young Karen gets a taste of her own medicine. This happened a few years ago at a theme park that was part of the More Than Five Flags chain. Typically, an hour or so before a theme park opens, a crowd of people start to gather outside the main gate so they can get in as soon as possible and make a beeline for the premium rides before the lines get crazy long. I was attending an event at the park and one of our perks was getting in an hour before the park opened and enjoying ERT, exclusive ride time, until the general public was allowed in. When it was time for us to enter, we each had to show our event badge and present our admission ticket and season pass to the employees at the entrance gate. In this instance, the gatekeeper was an elderly lady named Ida. She looked to be close to 90 years old and was barely over 5 foot tall. As I was preparing to hand Ida my badge and pass, a rude 20-something Karen shoves her way in front of me and shows Ida her season pass, but no event badge. Ida politely tells Karen that you'll have to wait another hour until the park opens to the public. Karen, why do I have to wait but they don't? Ida, because they're here for a special event. Karen, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Ida, with a glare that could kill. No, I'm not freaking kidding you. And drops Karen's pass on the ground, forcing Karen to bend over and pick it up in a tightly packed crowd. After Karen huffed away, I told Ida, way to go. Ida said she picked the wrong one to curse at today. I said, no, she picked exactly the right one. You gave her what she deserved. It still makes me smile. Well, we've learned a lot today. We've pretty much learned how not to act. Like if you act nothing like the people in this episode, you're already doing pretty good. And yeah, I feel like that's enough Karens for today. I hope you guys had a wonderful time, but it's definitely time for something wholesome. When you actually laugh at a meme instead of making the nose thingy, I would like to award you the highest honor I can bestow. Save. <laughs> that's so funny. So like when you don't only exhale super loud out of your nose, like, oh my God, you actually made me laugh out loud. Congratulations. Me praying for my mom to live until I'm successful so I can repay everything that she's done for me. Oh yeah, that's so beautiful. Like, please, they've done so much for me. That's so nice. And that would be such a good feeling. Me having a bad day, but reminding myself of the good things in life. Yeah, that's so right, isn't it? Like, even though it feels bad, it's not all bad. There's still beauty in the world. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes about Karens, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Renta1015. Listening to Vincey while drawing with my little kitten sleeping on my lap. I love your content. Aw, oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you do enjoy the episodes. And the fact that you're listening to them with your kitten sleeping on your lap. That's bloody amazing. And yeah, I really appreciate the support. Make sure you guys 
look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!